Hi, everybody, and welcome back. It's Pastor Renee again from the Shared Covenant Ministries here in Horicon, Juno, and Lowell. And uh, I'm glad you're here to join us. And today I will be preaching about love and hate. And what is Jesus talking about here? So our scripture is from the, uh, the book of Luke, chapter 14, verses 25 to 33. Now large crowds were traveling with him, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going out to wage war against another king will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000. If he cannot, then while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possession. Here ends today's reading. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, this is a little confusing, isn't it? If our view of Jesus' teachings is summed up with love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your mind, and love others as you love yourself, then how can we make sense of verse 26 in today's reading, where Jesus says, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Does Jesus want us to love others or hate them? And can how can we hate our family if Jesus tells us that we should even love our enemy? Well, the explanation is actually simple. Jesus is a fan of exaggeration. Sometimes. For instance, a little bit of exaggeration that he used when Jesus told the woman who was caught in adultery, go and sin no more. He knew that expecting someone to live the rest of their life without committing another sin wasn't achievable. But in saying this to her, he was encouraging her to no longer commit adultery. He was also encouraging her to take a new path with her life and turn to God. This is what Jesus invites each of us to do. Today's reading expands on that invitation by use of hyperbole to indicate that Jesus is not just a prophet, but God incarnate as he insists that our love for him shall surpass our love for family and friends and, yeah, even life itself. Jesus is continually pointing our attention heavenward as he teaches and preaches. He tells us our earthly possessions are fleeting. Money 
is a tool that we're blessed with. It's a tool which we use to bless others with as well. And if we put too much value on our possessions, what have we learned about God's purpose for our lives? And I have an example for you. The first time that Shane and I went to Haiti was life-changing for us. And when we returned home, it took every bit of restraint I had to not order a huge dumpster and throw out all of our possessions that weren't absolutely necessary. Why, you may ask? Well, because I felt so much guilt for the blessings that we have in this part of the globe. And I wanted to throw it all away. I didn't want to see that TV. I didn't want wall hangings, furniture, anything else that made me feel guilty for having it. It made no sense to me that we had all these things and people in Haiti had nothing to make their lives easier. I mean, I have a stovetop and an oven and they have a fire, but only when it's not raining. It's just not fair. And I know life isn't fair. If I had read this piece of scripture when we returned from Haiti that first time, I think I would have been easily convinced to go ahead and get that dumpster. Giving up all of my possessions seemed like a comforting thought to me. Now today, as much as I still feel guilt for being blessed with so much, getting rid of it all is a more difficult proposition. It could have something to do with my age. <laughs> And how much I appreciate having conveniences like a washing machine and a refrigerator. It also could have something to do with the fact that I've realized throwing away my possessions won't make me feel less guilty for being blessed. So instead, Shane and I have chosen to bless families in Haiti with food, medical aid, and education for their children. We also support the ministry of the Shared Covenant Ministries with our time, talent, and treasure because this is another area where we see the need to be a blessing. We give what we can with our blessings, or bl with our blessings so others can be blessed as well. But does not giving up all of my possessions mean I don't love Jesus? In my heart, I don't believe it does. I believe that God knows my heart. He knows all of our hearts. And God knows whether we are devoted to Jesus or not. Jesus paid our eternal debt and in return requires our full devotion. Can we handle giving 100% of our devotion to Jesus? Or maybe the more fitting question is, can we handle not giving 100% of our devotion to Jesus? Just how valuable are these earthly possessions to us anyway. Whether it be our loved ones, our finances, our time, our security, or our comfort, we must guard against serving any false idols if we profess ourselves as devout 
followers of Jesus Christ and not merely self-proclaimed Christians. Did you notice how I worked commandment number one in there? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. No false idols. No thinking our possessions are more important than Jesus and the God that we serve. So what's more important to us? God or things? In the days ahead, let's give this some prayer and some thought. What does God require of us? What are we capable of? What's holding us back? It's never too late to give 100% of our devotion to Jesus as he gave 100% of his life for us. Thanks be to God. And Amen.